Hey everyone, my name is Carter. Welcome to Okim Bytes. Today we're going to be covering how to figure out the Z effective nuclear charge using Slater's rules. Let's get into it. So in our previous video we talked about what the simplified Z effective nuclear charge was and how you could calculate it. Here's a review. The Z effective nuclear charge is equal to the actual nuclear charge minus any shielding electrons. And you can figure out which electrons are shielding by looking at all the electrons from lower quantum numbers. So for example, if your current quantum number for the valence electrons is 4, anything 3 and below is going to be shielding. I've stated that here once again. Any electron from an n that's lower than the current principal quantum number is shielding. If this doesn't make sense, make sure you check out the previous video, which I've linked in the description. And also take a look at my old videos on quantum numbers, how to calculate them, what do they actually mean, if none of that stuff makes sense to you. So here's an example of how to calculate the simplified Z effective nuclear charge. Sulfur has 16 atomic number, which means it has 16 protons and 16 electrons in a neutral atom. Out of these, you can see that only some are shielding and some are non-shielding. So here, is the electron configuration for sulfur. And all of these are electrons that are in principal number n lower than three, which is our valence electrons. So I'm gonna make them blue to show you that these are shielding. These electrons are in the same principal n quantum number as your valence electrons. So these are not shielding. When you consider this simplified version of how to calculate the Z effective nuclear charge, so I'm going to make these green. So when you look back at what the formula is, the Z effective nuclear charge is equal to your Z. In this case, it's 16, which is the total number of protons that are in the nucleus. I'll make this green for you. Minus 10, which is all electrons that are shielding. And this is why I had colored it blue earlier. So anything that's blue, is shielding because it's n that's lower than your current n. So your total ends up being 6. It's 16 minus 10, which is 6. Now this is the simplified version of how to find the z-effective nuclear charge. But you can see that it's possible for electrons even in the current quantum number, so for example, these 3s2 electrons, to be shielding. And that's what Slater's rules talk about. So in Slater's rules, he discusses how different electrons in the different principal numbers can have shielding based on how close the electrons are to the nucleus. Electrons that are much closer to the nucleus end up having more shielding, and electrons that are much further away from the nucleus have less shielding. And so let's take a look at this diagram. Over here, we've got an electron that's all the way out here. Any electrons that are in this area which is very close to the nucleus, are going to shield this outer electron a lot. And any electrons that are out here, which are much further from the nucleus, are going to shield this electron that's far out a lot less. You can also think about it that any electron that's past this electron, so it's further away from the nucleus, is not going to shield at all. That's what's covered by Slater's rules. We're going to go through some examples in this video that will give you a much better idea of how to calculate the actual shielding based on how close the electrons are to the nucleus by following Slater's rules. And here's how you go about calculating the Z effective nuclear charge based on Slater's rules. So first take a look at this table from Libertext.com. What it shows you is that you have to look at how many electrons are in the same shell as your electron of interest and how many electrons are not in the same shell as your electron of interest. You also have to look at what is the current shell of your electron of interest. For example, if you're interested in S and P based electrons that are in the valence shell, then you have to follow this set of rules. And if you're interested in D and F electrons that are in your shell, then you have to follow this set of rules. The steps to follow are written here. First, you look at what is the electron configuration of whatever element that you're interested in. Then you have to figure out if you're looking at S and P electrons or D and F electrons. 
and you're trying to figure out what are the shielding electrons for your current electrons of interest. And then you have to look at how many electrons are in the other shells besides the one that you're looking at. And finally, you add all the numbers together and you get a final Z effective nuclear charge. If this doesn't make sense right now, that's totally okay. We're going to get into some examples and it's really easy. So here's our first example. Let's just take a look at helium, which has two electrons and it's very simple. The electron configuration for helium is 1s2. You can also show it in this format where you've got two electrons, one with the positive spin and one with the negative spin in the 1s orbital. So first thing you notice is that our electron of interest, which is this one, is in the 1s orbital. So you go down to this table, oh look, this is my electron of interest. So now that we have an electron of interest, we can figure out what the shielding is. And the shielding is based on what other electrons are in principal numbers lower than the current electron, as well as the electrons in the same orbital. That's the difference between Slater's rules and the simplified Z effective nuclear charge that we discussed earlier. Even the electrons in the current orbital matter. So let's do a calculation. Okay, we've discussed that our current electron of interest is in the 1s orbital. There's only one other electron that's available, and that other electron is in the same group. Look at this. Any other electrons that are in the same group? So here's how you calculate the shielding. You take this 0 0.3, which is for every other electron that's in the same group, and you multiply it by the number of electrons that are in the same group, and you get the shielding. So our total Z effective nuclear charge in this case is two, which comes all the way from here. That's our atomic number of helium minus 0 0.3, which is from our shielding. And our total is 1.7. This should be a very simple example that shows you that all you have to do is figure out which electron you're interested in. That's the one I pointed at earlier. Then you look at what other electrons are there, either in the current group or all of these, which are for other groups. And then you just multiply the shielding coefficient. In this case, it was 0 0.3 by the number of electrons. And you add up all the shielding and you subtract it from 2, which is the atomic number. As a recap, if you had done the same thing, but use the simplified C effective nuclear charge, your answer would have been two. So there's a slight difference between Slater's rules and the simplified version because Slater's rules actually does a better job of predicting ionization energy than the simplified Z effective nuclear charge that we had discussed in previous videos. Let's do another example to drive this home. All right, so our example is gonna be sulfur, which has an atomic number of 16. Here's the full electron configuration for sulfur. You can see that if we're interested in an electron that's here in the 3p orbital, there's a whole bunch of other electrons that are going to be shielding, not only in the 1 and 2 principal quantum numbers, but also in this 3s orbital and the other electrons that are in the 3p orbital besides the one we're interested in. So sulfur has a total of 16 electrons. One of those is the one that we're interested in, which is going to be the one in the 3p. So we go down to our table and we're interested in something that's in the p orbital. So we're looking at this row. So then we can make a really nice table like I've shown at the bottom. First, how many electrons are in the same principal quantum number? Remember, our principal quantum number in this case is three. So what are all the other electrons that are in the three principal quantum number orbitals? You've got two here that are in the 3s, and you've got three here that are in the 3p besides the one that we're interested in, right? So a total is five. Now look at all the electrons that are in groups with principal quantum number n minus one. In this case, our n minus one is two, and we've got a total of six plus two electrons there. So I've written that over here. For n minus one, we've got eight electrons. 
And these eight electrons are going to contribute 0.85 shielding according to the table here. And then we look at how many electrons are in any kind of orbital that's lower than n minus one. In this case, since our principle is three, there's only one orbital that's less than n minus one, and that's the one orbital. So for principle quantum number one, we've got two electrons, which are these two green ones, and I stated them here. And the shielding from these is one. All electrons that are in groups with principal quantum numbers n minus one and below have a one shielding coefficient. So then I just do a subtotal. We've got five electrons that are in the same principal quantum number of three, and each of them has 0 0.35 shielding according to the table. So we've got a total shielding of 1.75. Then we've got eight electrons that are in the n minus one principal quantum number. Each of these has 0 0.85 shielding for a subtotal of 6.8. And then we've got two electrons that are much closer to the nucleus, which are less than n minus one principal quantum number. Each of these has one shielding coefficient. And so our subtotal is two when you just multiply it out. So our total shielding is 10.55. And as we had discussed earlier, the Z effective nuclear charge is equal to our Z, which is our total number of protons, minus S, which is our shielding. In this case, Z is 16, because the atomic number of sulfur is 16. And S is 10.55, because we just calculated up for each of the electrons that are in the other orbitals, or in the same orbital as our electron of interest. Our total Z effective nuclear charge, according to Slater's rules, is 5.55. And just as a note, previously, if we had just used the simplified method of calculating the Z effective nuclear charge, we would have found that it was 6. So Slater's rules predicts that this electron actually has slightly less Z effective nuclear charge than the simplified version. And why does it all matter? It's because Slater's rules are much better at predicting shielding and the ionization energy than the simplified Z-effective nuclear charge that we had explored in previous videos. That's why you need to learn this rule. I hope you had fun with this quick OCHEM bite and that you had learned Slater's rules. There's plenty more examples we could do. Please comment below. We can run through some that you're interested in. Also, make sure that you like and you subscribe because I'd love your support for this channel and so that you can keep learning organic chemistry through these quick bite-sized videos. This is Carter, signing off. Signing off.